go across to Veena Sikri, former diplomat who's joining us on the phone line. Veena Sikri, uh, your response to these uh, kind of articles that have been coming out because uh, uh, just recently we have seen also how external affairs minister has said that there is one particular interpretation that is often given by certain media organizations uh, and he is of course referring to the western media in this particular case but uh, a similar misinterpretation is being alleged in the case of Leicester and the interpretation of what has transpired there. Veena Sikri. Yes, actually, we have written a long letter. A number of us colleagues have signed it. We are extremely disturbed by the interpretation given in the Indian Express uh, article by uh, Shri Bhanu Pratap, Pratap Bhanu Mehta. And it is a total, totally distortion. It's a total distortion of what actually happened. We do know, and I'm saying we know because there have been statements by the local police authorities in Leicester, there have been statements by members of parliament, of the British parliament, conservative member of parliament, Blackman, there have been statements by the Indian High Commission in London, and there have been statements by the UK Home Secretary, Swela Breverman. So they, all these statements make it absolutely clear that the attack was on the Hindu homes and the, on the Hindus, uh, it was a vicious attack by the Islamists, including calling for... Uh, them to leave. They wanted to clear Leicester of all the Hindus. I mean, it's absolutely unheard of that such a thing should be happening uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in Leicester, in the UK. And um, uh, but on the contrary, the letter, now the, the, the description has come that as if, as if it was the Hindus who were, uh, you know, attacking. So I think this is why uh, our uh, colleagues and all of us are very annoyed at this complete distortion. This letter is promoting him, uh, this uh, article written by uh, by Siddhi Pratap Banu Mehta is, is, is actually promoting Hindu phobia because it, it only seeks one effort and that is to blame everything on the government of Prime Minister Modi. It doesn't matter. I mean, when the UK government is saying something different, the UK police is saying something different, the actual facts on the ground are very clear. The people who have suffered, there's, there's uh, documentary evidence. There is uh, documentary evidence uh, through videos of uh, the Islamist mobs being incited, you know, and the, the, the terrible uh, words used against the Hindus. A completely communal incident, uh, you know, charged with these Islamist groups. And uh, we have uh, said that you know, there must be absolutely uh, strong condemnation of this. And uh, any attempt to link what happened there to the Prime Minister Modi's government is absolutely, it is, it is diabolical. It is, it is a, a very uh, strange and unacceptable format that is going on. So we have, have clarified uh, fully uh, what is our uh, uh, point of view and how we feel that this, this aspect should be looked at. Well, and you know, I just want to quote from this letter, ma'am, because what has been said yes. here is very significant. You're saying that in one fell stroke, the sophistry of Mehta's presentation completely exonerates the Islamist radicals who talked explicitly of doing in Leicester what was done to Kashmiri pundits in Kashmir Valley. Further, it makes the violent Islamist Mohammed Hijab vanish in toto from the narrative. So, uh, completely ignoring one side of the story, uh, which is the kind of violent threats, the statements that have been given, including by several of them, uh, even still present present on social media where open threats are being given to uh, Hindus in general in the UK. Absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I mean, what you have actually picked the number of the letter where there is, as I said, documentary uh, proof, video proof that uh, the, uh, these attacks were made and these terrible uh, attempts to, uh, you know, push the Hindus out and make their stay in Leicester so uncomfortable. Uh, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And Leicester is one place where the Hindus and Muslims have uh, tried always in the past to live together and work together and, you know, uh, be, be uh, live in full harmony. But there you have these outsiders elements coming in, this person like, Mohammed Hijab, the statement you just quoted. And it, it shows that there is this uh, uh, strong effort, a very systematic strong effort by people who are not even uh, from the subcontinent, uh, but others who are there, uh, some who are there from the subcontinent from Pakistan and others are there from other countries. And they're trying to create this foul atmosphere everywhere. We have seen similarly even in right. uh, US academia, this Hindu phobia building up and bl blaming everything that happens on, uh, you know, the Hindus. I don't know what it is. Maybe, you know, it is something that that uh, seeing uh, that the uh, Indian community is doing so well abroad, uh, all members of the Indian community are doing okay. so well abroad, they're well settled, and uh, now you have this attempt to disturb the situation and to push them out of where they are living in peace and harmony. Veena Sikri, thank you so much for joining us and sharing with us your perspective. As you rightly mentioned, the government of UK may be saying something else, and even members of parliament in the United Kingdom may be saying otherwise. Well, listen in, in fact, to what Bob Blackman, a member of parliament, had said a few days ago.
and I join with my right honourable friend, the member for Chipping Barnet, in condemning the violent attacks made on Hindu temples in Leicester and Smethwick only just last night. But next week, the Hindu festival of Navratri begins, and on the 24th of October, we will celebrate Diwali and the following day, Hindu New Year. The Hindu community in this country are seriously concerned about their safety in going about their celebrations. So could my right honourable friend arrange for an urgent statement to be made by the new Home Secretary on what arrangements are going to be made to make sure that our Hindu friends and neighbours are able to celebrate their religion in peace and harmony as they've always done? All right, so a letter being written by several top bureaucrats, in fact, uh, as far as uh, uh, that particular article is concerned, saying that it is completely ignoring several of the realities of the situation on ground there in the United Kingdom and is a completely one-sided interpretation of the events that have transpired there. Uh, looking at it merely from one particular uh, prism is a, a clearly, of course, the sum and substance of what is being said. And in fact, I want to read out uh, various portions of this letter. Exporting division fits neatly in this Hindu phobia playbook, airbrushing the violent Islamist radicals in Leicester and switching the blame completely to the Modi government's alleged divisive policies in India, predictable for the author perhaps, but shocking and disturbing nonetheless. Dislike, even acute dislike of Mr. Modi is one thing, exporting distorted takes on UK disturbances and pinning the blame for them on Mr. Modi is something very different, totally diabolical, dangerous and unacceptable. Hindu phobia, as has been brought out by independent academic studies in US institutions, is spreading apace in the US as also in the UK, especially among the left liberal academia. All those who have, have India's larger welfare and well-being at heart and those who value the strength of India's civilization heritage should come together to oppose it. All right, I believe my colleague uh, Kitty is also joining us with uh, more of those details from that letter. Kitty, take us through what else this letter says. Well, yes, uh, uh, you know, the third paragraph here of this letter clearly says there are a lot of contradictions that these dignitaries have pointed out to this in this letter that uh, Pratap Bhanu Mehta in his open had written to. Written. And he, uh, well, these dignitaries say that he contradicts himself in, on this point also in the concluding paragraph of his article. The object of his venom becomes clear, you know. The kind of hate he is basically trying to spread through this article, through this open, that becomes very clear when he says that Hindutva is not about the defense of Hinduism or Hindu interests, but a global ideology of hate and cultural dominance. Now, what uh, the dignitaries here are asking is that who is Mehta really speaking for? Is he really speaking for himself or he is actually speaking for those whose mouthpiece he is? Uh, they are talking about the ecosystem and the lobby that back home, that in India is trying to actually peddle lies, false narratives. Uh, about the uh, 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 and, and not the real picture. What they hear, uh, are saying is that his real concern does not seem to be the Leicester rights. He's basically not concerned about what really what the Hindus have been going right. through in UK, but rather to mount yet another vicious attack on the government led by Prime Minister Modi. He's speaking for those who've been peddling false narratives, distorted narratives of the Indian reality inside and outside the country, regardless of the consequences. He, he doesn't worry about the consequences. What kind? you know, what kind of reaction or consequences this, this uh, uh, false, uh, you know, this peddling of false narratives could have in order to tar the present government. His m motive, his aim is only to malign the government whose stability and strong future prospects are alarming for them. This is what Thank you so saying. much, uh, Kitty, for joining us with that update. We're going to slip into a very quick break. More news and updates coming up on the other side. Stay tuned.